perfect. guys saw in the last video we got most of the front of the engine pulled off when i say the front i mean like the timing belt cover and stuff to put the cam and crank sensors on which we have now done and this is where we are at now so i did show in the other video that i got this in here put a new bracket in here the one in the other video was just a mock-up bracket it was not like pretty by any means i just wanted to make sure that i could get the sensor lined up i wanted a hard enough bracket i knew where it was going to sit and then got the pulley back on with the crank sensor down there and everything seems to fit pretty well so for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you saw that I had kind of mocked up the coil packs. So I am using the 1ZZ coil packs and they fit in there pretty well, but could be better. And today I'm going to make a plate that holds all the coil packs in place. So should make the engine bay look a lot better. I am missing a few of the coil packs. They're still in shipping. They should be here this week, but we can get most of the holes done and get the plate all lined up and everything we need to for now. And for those of you that are not familiar with the 1ZZ coil packs, they are considered a smart coil. So you just wire them right to the ECU. You don't need igniters, anything like that. It gets the signal from the ECU. It's 12 volt supply and you'll fire the, the coils as need. It'll fire the... It'll... It will fire the coils as needed. So it'll make the engine run just way smoother. No igniters none of that stuff so I can clean out most of the stuff in my engine bay. A lot of that stuff is coil pack. That's kind of by my intake manifold is the igniters and stuff so we won't need that anymore. So what we're gonna do today is I made up a little mock little plate here. So you can see it's actually dimple dyed and the 1ZZ fits perfect in the dimple die. You can see there on the back, so there's the dimple die. It's got a perfect seat, the correct diameter. Now this should be pretty easy. I'm gonna use just a piece of um, steel sheet metal that I got from Home Depot. And then I'm gonna use this guy, which is the factory 7M uh, spark plug, boot, holder, thing, whatever. So I'm gonna use this as a template, and that way I can get all these holes lined up, all these ones lined up on this. So I'm gonna go to drop the whole coil pack assembly down on there. I know that it'll line up. All right, so I just laid that in there. And you can see with the coil pack, you've got quite a bit of a gap there. So you won't be able to use this one. I mean, you, you could probably lift it up, but I'm just gonna make my own new plate and completely ditch this one here and make up for that gap there. All right, so this is pretty new to me. So I'm gonna have to take some measurements here and make sure I've got the right width here for the quill pack. So the valve covers, they kind of slope, they slope like this, so they slope out. And I wanna make sure that this plate is going to basically be the right width for where this is going to be sitting for this width here. That makes no sense at all, but you guys will get what I'm, what I'm getting to here. So the measurement I need to make is going to be about here. So, I mean, I'm gonna make the difference up. So I'm, we're looking at probably two and a half inches if I were to guess. So since these slope down, this, the valve cover slope down a little bit, I'm trying to just guess where this is gonna land. So I think two and a half will probably be pretty close to where we need to be. So now I'm gonna cut it first. So maybe I'll start with like two and three quarters, cut it down fit it up. If it doesn't fit right, then I'll cut a little bit more off. I don't want to cut too much off and then have to redo the whole thing. So I do have enough metal for about two of these covers. So I don't want to use up all the metal, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. So we'll see what happens here.
metal obviously is the way to go. You can see cutting it, I don't have a break, obviously here. So I just cut it with a pair of tin snips and it makes it uneven. So I have a solution for that. And that is going to be a dimple dime. It uses two halves. So it's kind of sloped on this one end here, sloped on the other end here. You put a piece of sheet metal in between the two. Usually you use a press, but in this case, I'm using a hydraulic ram. So it's gonna actually pull these together instead of smash them together. It works the same way, just kind of opposite. And that's going to add some rigidity to that plate. I don't need to be super strong. It's just holding the coil packs in place. So I'm not looking at supporting a ton of weight, but by doing the dimple dies, not only will the coil pack seal sit inside the tapered portion of the dimple die, the dimple die will add the strength to that plate and should straighten it out. Okay, everything started smudging, but I got all of the, kind of see the light right there. All the holes are center punched. So now I'm going to use one of these step drill bits. Some people call them Christmas tree bits, but they're just the different sizes. I'm gonna go all the way to the max size here. That way I can get the next portion done. Right, so now what I'm gonna be using for the next portion here is these right here, I'm gonna actually use a hydraulic ram. This is actually called a hydraulic punch driver kit. So what it does is it uses these little guys here that are all tapered, and that's going to punch out the exact hole I need here for the dimple die. This guy here just slips over this. Take your metal, start with number one, slide that over there. And this is threaded, make sure it's punching down the right way. That's why I'm not worried about cleaning all this up because it's gonna be gone. Okay, make sure it's all nice and tight. Lock this, and start pumping this guy here, and it cuts through. Go all the way down, and there's your perfect hole. I picked that thing up at Harbor Freight. It wasn't super expensive, but I actually did my floor pan in the same thing because this is pretty much gonna, be a track car and it's all cage and everything. I did the floor pan the same way. So I dimple dyed some of them up so my heel of my foot would catch these and then those ones are going down. And same thing, that'll just add the rigidity to the uh, floor pan there. So there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and get the other five of those cut up or knocked out. I'm having a really hard time talking today, whatever. But I'm gonna get the other five done and then we'll move on to the dimple dye and I'll show you guys that as well. portion. I'm going to drop that guy on there. I'm going to take this, drop it over that, take the other piece of the dimple die, set that on there, and then I'm just going to use the center punch or the hole punch, whatever, and I'm going to flip it around and you know, it's sitting there by itself and then slowly start running this down. I'm going to smash it all and make sure it's all nice 
flat. Move the pressure here. Take this back off here. And pop this off, and there you go. Here's your dimple die. Pretty good. Coil packs. Drop it down over that. And it sits almost perfect inside that. So rinse and repeat. Let me do the other five here and dimple die those out. And then we'll lay it over the head here and make sure everything lines up. And then we'll go to the next portion. <laughs> So I think coil pack positioning is kind of just up to you on how you want it to look. I'm going to run mine something like to where these are going to be running basically down the center. All right, some things have transpired a little bit. So what I decided I'm gonna to do to make it easier to get the coil pack in and out, I'm going to put in some rib nuts in that plate. So when I put the coil pack through that plate into the head or over the spark plug, I can just put that Allen bolt through, right into the rib nut and just tighten it down and call it good. I'm still gonna put the spacers in there because I wanna make sure that the coil pack sits straight, not at some weird angle, not that it really matters. I don't think it would. But I wanted to be sitting pretty much straight up and down, so I'll still have to do the little spacers, which I don't have. But at least you'll see the rib nut in the plate. I'll put the plate on, put the coil packs, the four that I have, in, screw them down. You guys have a good idea, and I think we're done. be some bolts so there's one of them so they'll have like one there two three and then like four back there and I should hold that whole plate so like I said when I get the other coil packs here I'll throw those other ones in there get those bolted in there get those little spacers so I'll have to make each one of those I'll also have to make six of them but I got to measure the right height so when I tighten it down it makes a good seal around that rubber gasket on the coil pack once it's in then we're good to go so like I said these are smart coils so I just have to wire the signals to the ECU. They've got to have 12 volts and then wire it somewhere to the, the engine block. So I'll do that, it should be pretty straightforward. I may or may not record that, I don't know yet, but. So hopefully you guys like this video. I know that some of you guys may be like, ah, oh, do it on a, a different plate, do it. I don't know, maybe someday down the road I'll do it like on a titanium plate or something, make it look really nice. But for right now, I just need to hold those coil packs in there so they don't wiggle around and cause problems. Kind of considering, changing this out later on for something a little bit more sturdy, a little bit thicker aluminum. Home Depot didn't have a ton of options, so that's what I went with. 
as far as like the, the length I needed. So I may end up switching out later on, do something different, but for now it'll work. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll do some more videos coming up here pretty soon. Keep you guys posted on the Supra and getting it tuned. Hopefully that will be very, very soon. So we'll see what happens. But that being said, like, comment, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the subscribers and everyone that's followed me thus far. for supporting the channel and you guys are interested in what I'm doing. So that being said, we'll see all of you guys on the next one.